We've been looking at Leviticus all of this semester, and we've been considering how someone can enter into God's presence, how someone who is a sinful person, who is so far from perfect, can enter the presence of a holy and perfect God. And there were many things that we were shown that stopped people coming into God's presence. Well, today I'd like to introduce you to a woman, a woman in the Gospel of Luke. Um, and we're going to think about the things that were stepping, stopping her from coming into God's presence and, and what he did. So this woman, we know a couple of things about her. We're going to introduce her. She was a cripple. And the Bible tells us that she was bent over and could not straighten up. And I thought it would be important for you to experience her world. So I want everyone to stand up. And I want you to bend. You can either be a hunchback like this, or you can go um, further down. And I want you to look at your world. Imagine a world where all you can see is what's beneath your feet. So it's the world of Israel. So it's dust and stones and ants and maybe some scorpions or something like that. It's dirty feet. Your nose is closer to them as well. So you're probably smelling those feet. Um, Try and look up in this position. So, so you're not allowed to move your back. Just try and get your, your neck up and feel the strain on your neck. Okay, so you can see little children, but it's going to be very difficult to see people's faces, to see the sky, to see a sunset. This is the world of this woman. So take a seat. So we're told that this woman is a cripple. And you remember uh, what local people thought of someone who was crippled or disabled. Uh, even Jesus' disciples in John 11 said to him, Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So this woman was someone that every day uh, people were judging her. People were saying, why is she like that? Has she done something or her parents done something? There were whispers all around her. This is her world. The Bible also tells us one more thing about her, and that was that her crippling was due to an evil spirit. It's really interesting in the commentaries. I haven't found a single commentary that makes a comment on that. They just skip it. Bounce straight over that little thing. And we don't really know what it meant. Had she been dedicated to an evil spirit? Uh, had maybe her parents tried to do a bargain? And they'd taken her along to some sort of temple and said, look, if you make our daughter well, we'll, um, you can, you know, we'll be dedicated her to you. We don't know why she was bent over because of an evil spirit. But both of these things would have made it very difficult for her to come into the presence of God. A sort of an uncleanness, a spiritual uncleanness, and also uh, just this disability and the way people treated her. So I'm going to tell you the story now, and we're going to actually do the story three times. We've got time to do it three times, but just listen to the story. So here is the story. One Sabbath, Jesus was in a synagogue teaching, and there was a woman at the back, and she was uh, crippled by an evil spirit for 18 years, and she was bent over and could not straighten up. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward, and then he said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and started praising God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the religious leader said to all the people, there are six days you can work. Come on one of those days to be healed. Don't come on the Sabbath. Jesus said, you hypocrites. Don't you, uh, on the Sabbath, untie your ox or donkey and lead it to water? Well, this woman, who is also a daughter of Abraham, has been kept bound by Satan for 18 long years Shouldn't she be healed on the Sabbath? Well, all Jesus' opponents were humiliated.
But the people were delighted at all the wonderful things they saw Jesus doing. That's the end of the story. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called a lead through. And this means we're going to go line by line through the story. And I just want you to call out the answers, call out, fill in the blanks for me. It doesn't matter if it's noisy. It's actually good for us to verbalize um, what we're hearing. Um, and that's part of the practice process. So we start the story on a, certain, on a Sabbath. Jesus is in the synagogue teaching. And who is in the synagogue that day? What do we, what's the first thing we know about her? A crippled woman. And why is she crippled? Because of an evil spirit. And for how long? Okay, a woman who's been crippled by an evil spirit for 18 long years. And then it gives us a repeat. What was her problem? She was bent over and could not straighten up. When Jesus saw her, what did he do? Called her forward. And when he, she came forward, he said something to her. You are set free from your infirmity. And then when he did something, touched her. And what happened? She straightened up and immediately started praising God. Great. Scene one done. Okay. Scene two. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. What does the religious leader say? There are six days you can work. Come on one of those days. And then he hits them again. Don't come on the Sabbath. Okay. So there are six days you can work. Come on one of those days to be healed. Um, don't come on the Sabbath. Okay. Jesus says something in response. Pretty strong. <laughs> you hypocrites. Everyone remembers that bit. Okay. <laughs> now there's a bit of a complex bit. What does he say next? Wouldn't you not untie your donkey? Your ox and your donkey. You know, on the Sabbath, wouldn't you uh, untie your donkey or your ox and lead them to water? But this, this woman... A daughter of Abraham, she's been bound by Satan. You can tell the ones that have been in my storytelling because their <laughs> memories are really good. They've learned how to pick up the clues. She's been bound by Satan. And, and this is what I love. For 18 long years. Get your long in there. Really, every word is important. He's, she's been bound by Satan for 18 long years. Shouldn't she be healed on the Sabbath? Okay, two responses. The religious leaders are humiliated. His, Jesus' opponents are humiliated. And what about the people? With ev all the wonderful things they have seen Jesus doing. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to tell it a, a, quickly again, and then we're going to get you in pairs to tell it with each other. So I'll just do it. Just It'll be a bit mucky otherwise. Okay, here we go. One Sabbath... Jesus was in the synagogue teaching, and there was a woman there who had been crippled by an evil spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up. So Jesus called her forward and said, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And then he touched her and she immediately straightened up and praised God. The... Um, Religious leaders were indignant because Jesus healed on the Sabbath. So they said to the people, hey, there are six days you can come, uh, that you can work. Come on one of those days to be healed. Don't come on the Sabbath. Jesus said, you hypocrites, don't you untie your ox or donkey on the Sabbath and lead it to water? Well, this woman who is a daughter of Abraham has been kept bound by Satan for 18 long years Shouldn't she be set free on the Sabbath? Well, uh, all of Jesus' opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things they were seeing Jesus do. So I'd like you to be in pairs, and the way you can do it is a sort of a ping-pong method. So one sentence, and then just sort of switch backwards and forward, helping each other to tell the story. So go for it. Yes, if you like peace and quiet, this is perhaps not the method for you. Um, it can be a bit chaotic. 
Um, we're now going to do um, four discussion questions. So if the slide can go up. Okay, so uh, quite often I do six questions, but we're doing three of the normal questions and then a special one related into our Leviticus series today. Um, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to do them in your small group of four. You're sort of in little horseshoes. You can make the horseshoe a little bit closer so that you can talk. Um, so find a group of three or four of you. And we have four questions. The first one is quite unusual. Uh, it is what questions might someone have about this story? And when you do this one, I'll, we'll go through one at a time. When you do this one, I actually want you just to put questions up in the air, a bit like popcorn. What would your non-Christian friends, what would your Christian friends ask? Please don't answer the question. It's just throwing out the questions. Then we're going to do one, what can we learn about people from this story, from the characters in this story? So thinking of the crowd, the religious leaders, and the woman. And then concentrating on what can we learn about Jesus from the story, just from this story. And then we're going to do what might we learn about being in God's presence from this story. Um, so let's start with Owen. Oh, and at the very bottom is the uh, website. So if you want to find out what the other questions are that we normally ask, it's everything's on that website. And that website comes in many different languages, including Japanese. We're working on Arabic at the moment, French, Spanish, um, lots of Asian languages. So more and more resources, especially for you working with um, migrants or uh, university students from different countries, you can actually have a, a complete set of training, but also evangelistic stories on that website. OK. We're just going to go through now one by one. So I want you to take about two minutes in your group to th just throw up into the air as many questions as you can think. What questions might someone have about this story? OK, let's uh, move on. Some of the questions that I have is, why was the woman there at all? I'm guessing maybe she didn't normally go to the synagogue um, because of what people thought of her. Why was she there? Was she there to see Jesus, to see if she could trust him enough to talk with him afterwards? Why did Jesus make her come forward? Why didn't he just deal with all of this lady outside privately later? So lots of questions. So get used to asking questions. We're going on to number two, again, about the same amount of time. What can we learn about people from this story? So you can think about the crowd, the religious leaders, or the woman. In Taiwan, they have a lot of prayer meetings where they ring a little bell at the end of each section. So that's what I'm doing. Oh, that's great. Well done. Thank you, Maddie. You can do that at the end of the next. I'll signal you for the end of the next question. OK, here's question three. What could we learn about Jesus from this story? And you're, you're Bible college students, so don't just say Jesus heals. Um, go a little beyond this, guys. Dig. Try and see something new that you've never seen before. And remember, it's only this story. So don't pull in anything from anywhere else. Because if you, if you had non-Christians in the group, you just got to stick with the story so that they don't feel you know, that you know a lot more than them. Okay, what can you learn about Jesus from this story? Go. And the fourth, the fourth question is a special one for today. Um, because we've been considering in how people can enter God's presence, what might we learn about entering God's presence from this story? You can think about the barriers, but also entering God's presence. Anything you've noticed from this story? Okay, so it's a short time this morning. We haven't had a huge amount of time for going over the story. I normally find that when I do a story, I need to do, I usually practice twice a day, morning and evening, in my shower. Uh, if I've reached a red traffic light and I'm driving, 
or um, when I'm out walking uh, and I practice my story, that's what I've been doing for this story, all of my walks recently. And sometimes, for, this is an easy story, but sometimes a harder story to get it accurate can take th me three weeks of work. Um, but I want to challenge you to think of someone in your life who needs to hear this story. Someone that you could use, tell this story to this week. It could be someone on a train. Pray that God uh, gives you an opportunity going home on the train. It could be a specific person in your church. It could be your hairdresser. I told one to a hairdresser last week. He's just, he doesn't know it yet. He started on the set. Um, <laughs> so for the next two years, he'll be hearing stories. Because I, I only go every 14 weeks. So that's... Um, but... Think of someone, and I would like you uh, just to share with the person next to you that person's name or the kind of person, and I want you then just to bow your heads and pray for that person. And I would love to hear in Stuvac if you've told your story. So share someone's name with the person next to you, just one person, and pray for those people that they would have an opportunity to hear God's word.